Today, for our Dreamers and Innovators series, I am delighted to be joined by Tim Steadman, who is CEO of Agilix. Dad and Virgin were so impressed by Agilix's innovative approach to plastic waste, which we all know is one of the biggest crises facing our planet, that we jumped at the chance um, to back this amazing company as one of the first investors many, many years ago. We also share a chairperson in the wonderful Peter Norris. Tim, I love the quote on your website, leading the development and commercialization of technologies and innovations in existing markets is very difficult work. Creating a new industry is a whole new matter. Um, to me, Adelix's innovation is, a, is the very, very best. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to learning more about you and your team's incredible journey over the last 14 years. So thank you very much for joining me today, Tim. You're very welcome. I'm looking forward to it. Um, the, um, the main thing for me is that I just love to be able to talk about incredible innovation. And I think the area of plastic waste is just so absolutely like just so vitally important and it's really hard to believe that now in 2021 um, only 10 percent of plastics globally are recycled and that means that 90 percent are ending up in landfills which in turn means they're getting into the rivers and the water systems and the seas and that's just really devastating for the world um, it's just just such a huge scale that it's quite hard to comprehend and i'm just wondering if you could help us understand it I like, could you imagine you were talking to, let's say, a, a class of sort of 10 year olds and how you describe this challenge that we're all facing and the work yeah. that you guys are doing to help tackle it? Yes. Well, I mean, I think, first of all, um, you know, I, I, I've heard this statement a couple of times and I, every time I hear it, I think, yes, it's more true than the, the, than, uh, the last time, which is that, you know, you still have people that doubt climate change that say it's not happening um, but there is nobody in the world who doubts the issue of plastic waste everybody gets it you know everybody understands that you know this plastic that's leaking out into the the ocean is the most obvious one you know the, the you see pictures of of it all over the place and you know that's terrible but but actually that's still only a fraction of the waste that's actually either being put in landfill or just being burnt for, for energy or whatever. And, and when you think about it, that that is just incredible because, you know, the if you think about it at the, at the real fundamental level, that material is all valuable material. And we're just throwing it away and we're putting it in places that it shouldn't be and allowing it to get out there. And so, you know, it's a little bit like, um, you know, if you have something that's really, really precious, which in this case is the, 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 the molecules that are in that plastic, we need to look after it. We need to make sure that we use it for the best possible thing. And, you know, the you know, plastic has done so much to make our lives different from the quality of our lives, the phones we use, the computers, keeping things safe, you know, during COVID, keeping things wrapped and clean. All of those things are really, really important. The issue is the way that we as humans then don't think when it gets to the end of the life and we just throw it away. And then it gets into the rivers it gets. And so that's the challenge that we've got to try and drive recycling rates. We believe is possible from 10% globally up to about 90%. And that's the kind of mission of the company to do those two things. We have got very used to having many single use plastics come into our houses. But mm -hmm. I think there is a majority of people now who are really wanting to do the right thing. But it is so confusing. Yes, like, you know, you yes. look on the side of all these different bottles, all these different products, and you like, do I throw away the top in this one and the bottom in this yeah. one? Do I have to take yeah. the paper off? Do I have to wash the yeah. carton? And I think yeah. the the messaging from recycling has has not got to the point where it's really easily digestible for people. Um, is there sort of a way that you're trying to do that um, to make it easier for the consumer? Well, one of the, the real challenges in this area is that people want to do, everybody knows this issue, people want to do the right thing. But sometimes in wanting to do the right thing, they actually do something that is making the situation worse. And here you get into trade-offs between addressing plastic waste versus the impact on the environment in terms of greenhouse gas emissions. 
So again, it comes back to really understanding what is the right product? What is the best use of this particular molecule, if you like, in terms of addressing both quality of human life, health and greenhouse gas emissions? And trying to bring all of that together is something that is, is, is very challenging, but actually there is a solution out there. There are ways of doing this and then helping people understand what to do and simplifying it. So, I mean, one thing that, that we're able to do is, you know, if there is mixed waste plastic, then, you know, actually understanding what really is in there, what truly is, does this compromise and, and, um, or contain. And, and, and so that basically is the new development that we've just launched called Cyclix. What Cyclix is all about is taking this huge complexity and turning it into something that's optimized for converting it back to something useful. And it's gonna use you know, all kinds of fancy things, you know, uh, artificial intelligence and whatever to try and help us with that. Um, but that's where you see you know, new tools around data and, and things like that can actually help simplify this complexity so that consumers can feel more comfortable about, okay, if I put this in there, I know something good is gonna to happen to it and it's not gonna end up in the ocean or somebody's beach. It's not going to end up just being going into landfill, but it's actually going to be valued as a product. And, and, and what you're trying to do today, if you look at waste and waste management, they're basically optimized to do a couple of things. The first one is to do a small amount, depending on the country, of mechanical recycling. The second thing then is to put it into landfill or to put it into, you know, burn it for some energy recovery. But what they're not uh, kind of equipped to do is to actually chemically recycle to, to what we would refer to also as advanced recycling, which is where you take um, product and you, you, you basically don't just kind of grind it up and wash it and then try and use it again. But what you do is you actually take it back to its raw materials. And once you've taken it back to its raw material, what you're able to then do is basically reuse that material as a, as a new feedstock to make prime uh, products. So in other words, we can take a dirty, contaminated flower pot, which might have soil in it and fertilizer in it and all of those kind of things and colorant in it, um, and mechanical recycling would not be able to touch that because it's just it's too low grade. We could put it back through the system and actually you could produce a food grade yogurt pot from it. So it's not recycling, that's upcycling. And, and that then means that and there are lots of different ways that you can use that. But if you can if you can deal with the reality of what the waste streams look like today, and you can start providing routes to turn those back into high value product, then what it, it becomes a sort of virtuous cycle because then what you're able to do is you're able to put money back into the waste streams to actually be able to extract more valuable products from it. Because at the end of the day, these, these molecules that are in there are valuable. I mean, they are the alternative is to go and take stuff out of the ground and, and use it or, or whatever it might be. So, We've got these molecules. I think part of it is we have to make sure that we use them, we reuse them, and we use them again, but for the highest value purposes. So you saying that we can now give people the excuse to not worry about buying single-use plastics, or do you think we still have to be very conscious that we decrease the amount that we're purchasing? So I think, it, I mean, I'm a firm believer in that you should use the right material for the right purpose. But what's important then is that where you do think there is a value to use a single use plastic, then you need to make sure that people have the means with which to recover that and, and make sure it doesn't get lost out of the system, but it gets reused for the same end use, the same quality of end use. Actually, when I was preparing for this interview, I read a statistic um, that in the UK alone, 35 million plastic bottles are sold every day. Yeah. Um, now that is a huge amount wouldn't be being used for the right usage because if collecting your water you could absolutely go and use something else. I, I, I totally agree. I totally agree. I think that you know this is where it, it, it becomes very um, but it comes very country specific as well because frankly a water bottle in the UK it's like why do you need that? 
I mean, the water out of the tap is perfectly okay to drink. The unique thing that Angelex brings is the joining together of the technology to convert waste into a valuable product, but also t applying technology to this concept of feedstock. In other words, the waste itself, what does it actually look like? What does it consist of? And understanding how those two things work together. That is completely unique. Nobody else is doing that today. What do you think some of the wider implications are that this new like recycling and this new form of sort of plastic production will have on the on people, will have on planet? And what, do you think any of them will affect the UN Sustainable Development Goals? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're very much aligned with those uh, goals. I mean, not not every single one, but a, but a number of those goals are very much kind of core to what we're doing. I mean, I, I think the reason why people come and work uh, at Angelex is because they're passionate about addressing this issue. You know, you you, you it's it's they've, they've come from all kinds of different worlds in the past and experiences. But they all want to be there because they believe that there's a way that we can really make a difference. And, you know, when you when you look at the size of the problem, um, it is mind blowing. It, it, you know, it is it's, it is just you sit there and you think, how on earth can we do this? Um, and the only way of doing it is just to start. <laughs> you, know, you just got to start and, and you, you know, just keep moving and and, and not be um you know sort of dissuaded by you know there'll be plenty of people who say well it doesn't work it, you know it can't do this can't do that well you know yeah there may be some things that trip up on the way and it won't all go smoothly first time but we're just going to keep pushing at it uh, because we have to i mean if this doesn't work then we have a much much bigger societal problem um, but we're very convinced it does work. My real mind is on Asia because Asia is where the big challenge is. You know, that's where most of the waste going into the ocean comes from. It's from, you know, nine or so rivers in Asia. Um, it's where most plastic is produced. It's where most plastic is thrown away. It's where, you know, developing economies are consuming it because it brings quality to life. And, and who are we in the West to say, you shouldn't have that because we have other alternates like drinking water straight out of the tap and things like that. And so I view that as just this huge opportunity to bring technology to help people develop, help people have that, that improvement in life expectancy, improvement in, in life chances, if you like. But at the same time, trying to nip this problem um, in the bud and try and uh, actually get you know, get this circular economy working in a, in a region where it would really have an impact. I love the passion in your voice and, and, and my passion is purposeful business. So businesses that are solving the world's issues and, and Agilex is 100% a purposeful business. Like how cool would it be if, if all businesses in the world were aiming to try and solve world crises, world problems? So just really well done for what you're doing. Um, what, what, what do you you think will be the next big breakthrough in the world of renewables um, or recycling technology? If you, do, can you see <laughs> that seeing your magic future? <laughs> your, your, your yeah, future. I mean, look, I, I really do think. I mean, I can talk for us. The the you know we're at a point of our first um, our, our first sort of customer led project. So we have one plant running in, in, in North America, but our first customer led project is will go into construction um, uh, likely later this year in Japan. Um, and, um, you know, we've then got a number of other ones coming through. I, I think as what's really going to see it is that when people see this in action, they see the, the proof, then there will be a stampede because, you know, it just, it, you know, it doesn't make any sense that we're, we're doing what we're doing today. And, you know, that may be a stampede that's led by, um, you know, brand owners who are basically saying enough's enough, we've got to do something about this. I think that's really good, the commitments they're making, but are they really going to take that next step? A lot of companies today, what I see is they're making commitments and then sort of handing it over to somebody else and say, well, do you sort it out? And I think that that is the key, that, that actually these big companies really start moving from commitments 
to actually putting their money where their mouth is and actually making change. And when that happens, then I think there will be um, a real acceleration in terms of the, the impact and, and a scaling up, which could be very, very exciting. This is a solvable problem. This is not, uh, uh, you know, it's a very difficult problem, but it's a solvable problem and it's technology that will take us to, to solve that problem. And also with the uh, like invention of, sort of tracking technology where you could actually probably, if you got a plastic bottle and you could scan it before you threw it in the bin and hopefully you could track, is this actually ending up where I want it to end up? In, um, and that would give humans a bit more of that incentive to, to put it in the right place and do the right thing. Absolutely. I, I do think that, that if the entire industry value chain really values those, and I, I think about this at the level of molecules, you know, if it values those molecules, then it will help consumers for them to value it as well, so that they're doing the right thing with it and not throwing it out the window of their car or stuffing it on top of a, a, a bin that's already full so it then gets, it blows away or whatever it might be. But actually, you know, this is this is actually something that's valuable to the to the to the globe, if you like, to the to the environment, and so I've got to treat it properly. Mm -hmm. well, well, thank you very much for everything you're doing. Um, it's absolutely amazing to see that there there is this in, innovation, this future technology that is going to make such a difference to the world. So well done, and thank you very much for chatting to me today. Thank you, thank you. I enjoyed it very much. So appreciate the time.